Good afternoon guys, Sam from Alarm Tech here, here to bring you another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Premier 24 alarm panel. Um, first of all, the best tip that I can give you is if you press menu and then number 4, it will give you the current version and also what type of panel that you're using. The newer ones will be a Premier Elite, um, the 24 will be just a variant of the panel and obviously this will go up to 48, 88, 168 and the 512. Um, and ideally, basically that will mean the amount of zones that they can hold. First of all, to get into engineer mode, all you need to do is type in the engineer password. Um, as default, it's just 1234. When you first come into these, if it says you need a user to enable access, uh, what you'll need to do is do the master code by default, which is 4321. Um, and it will say, you, do you want to enable engineer? At that stage, you can press a yes. But if you forget or you don't do it in time, uh, just press menu and it'll say join user menu. So just press yes. And now just press the down button until you get to join to enable engineer, uh, which is here. And then just press the yes button to confirm. And now we can we can now access engineer mode if, if not already, basically. So the first menu that, that we'll, we'll have is zone setup. Um, the alarm is basically asking you the question, do you want to enter the zone setup? Um, if we do, we can just press the yes button on the bottom left. If not, we can just scroll down using the down key to your next options. Um, obviously, these will be different on an elite um, because number two is area programming. Um, but going through the different options, uh, most of them are the same. And you can quick jump. So if, for example, I wanted to go into my engine utilities, I could press number nine and I could go straight into my engine utilities. Um, you will have to press yes after you've made your selection to actually go into it though and if you've made any um, decisions if you just press the menu button you you can go back a step as you can see um, so for example I want to start in my zone setup because it's best to set them up in in order um, so if I look at what I've got in my house at the moment I've got a zone 1 on panel and um, this will mean basically what's wired in as my zone 1 uh, and I can see that it's programmed up as an entry exit, which basically means that when this door is open and closed, when my alarm is starting to set, um, that will set the alarm. I can change that by pressing no, um, because basically the alarm is asking is this correct, and I'm saying no, it's not correct. I can then press zero if I want to make it a not used zone or spare it out of the system. And this will mean that if my uh, door contact wasn't working or if my hallway detector wasn't working, I can then take it out of the system um, and there will be no negative repercussions. Um, so if I just press yes, what will happen it will say not used and the arrow will, will go from this corner um, and that's mean it's now locked in basically. Um, and obviously I want to put it back in as a, um, a uh, entry exit so I just press number one and I can make it an entry exit again. Okay, so obviously you can press the down arrow to go through the zones and change all of the different um, the zone types or you can just press yes to go to the next option which is the attributes um, I'm not going to go into too much detail but basically um, you press no and you can go through all the different options uh, and this is obviously how you set up your part set for night time um, and also what different times they are also for the guard slash entry is if you've got a, a landing detector for example um, and you want to turn the alarm off from upstairs, you, you can select that option. Um, we'll just go back. Attributes 2 is again other options. Double knock is if you want the detector to effectively see you twice. Uh, it doesn't work on wireless contacts or wireless detectors or uh, shock sensors or door contacts because they're just a resource which go open, not a PIR which continuously fire. Uh, and then all the other options um, you you won't really need to use to be honest. Um, going across, we can see the text which we can we can change from the front door. I can then write it using the, an old uh, keypad style. So obviously, if I press um, three three times, I will get an F, and it will automatically jump across to my next letter as soon as I start. Uh, and you can cycle it round to get to your small character. On an elite what you'll have is an ABC or a TXT or a small ABC or even a 123 and to change that you press the no button 
and what will happen is that will change as I've said um, and it will still cycle rounds but a TXT is basically your predictive which isn't very good because um, it will predict the wrong words basically uh, and it will just become gibberish um, for your wiring, um, you know in the earlier videos we spoke about normally closed or end of line or double pole um, this is essentially it. So basically at the moment I've, I haven't got a resistor in my front door so I've currently done it as normally closed. So basically when I open the door it will go active. Um, if I was to press number um, 2 it will be my double pole end of line and this is what we will use if we had uh, resistors in that circuit. Um, that's it for the zone setup. I'll just show you in action. Uh, a nice little tip, so if you just press number 9 you can go straight into your initial utilities and obviously just press yes and then what we've got is if we press number 3 we can then do our vote of view zone status if we then press yes we can then see that the front door is currently secure uh, and if we were to open that front door it will then go active Holly can you just open the front door for me? Um, and what we can do is if we press the area button we can see that it's currently got zero resistance in the cable and if we were to open that, it then goes open circuit, and obviously we, we can now see it is active. Okay, that's, that's enough. Um, and that's basically what the alarm sees, the door being opened and closed. Um, moving back through, uh, we've got a global option. So from here, we can set the timers in which we're going to be um, exiting the building or entering the building. Uh, another nice one that we've got is our monitor hardware. Um, in this, what we can do is... Um, turn off a alarm from looking at phone line faults, turn it off from looking at power fouls, turn it off from looking at fuses blown, bell tampers, auxiliary tampers, panel lid tamper or a battery fault. Um, obviously I'd only recommend doing this on an out of hours call out just so obviously you don't have to go out. Um, for example say someone's bell tamper goes off, all it's basically got you can't get is negative to the, to the panel. Um, so obviously you can turn that off and then um, the panel won't report the bell tamper anymore and they can still use the alarm uh, and obviously what I'm, all I'm doing to edit it is just pressing no because it's not correct and I can use the arrows to move across and if I want to change that one I just press the no button again and that will just make it a star which basically means off and I can uh, I can press yes to confirm that um, that's it in the monitor in the global options uh, if I want to go into my keypad setup I can select the keypad one which is obviously all I've got your mapping of your zone one and two on the back of a keypad you'll have two separate zones which you can obviously program up um, and obviously in the first one i can set it as to be zone three and basically zone three on the panel will uh, will be overwritten and it will be using the keypad instead um, and also i can turn for times the volume sounds um, and that's essentially it. if I've got more than one area I can set the keypad to be in a different area and um, so the garage can only set the garage for example and the house will only set the house which would obviously be in area A and the garage will be in, in B just a note regarding the areas um, oh, I don't think this panel doesn't no, this this panel doesn't do them but on a um, elite 24 you can you can separate the zones into areas um which it, it has to be in one it can't be in it, it can't be in two because obviously it would, if you put the front door in a and b it will start to try to set b but obviously we don't want that to happen so all we do is it in a um do a full set and that would set the system okay um going through then we've got the expanded setup we don't have one on um system outputs we don't really need to use that's to set it with digicom and your setup users. So all we do for the setup users, you can change your master code and the engineer code through this. Um, and to change it, because it's already got the arrows pointing towards it, we then press yes. And now we can change the engineer code to, to whatever we fancy. Um, so for this one, I'm just do this code. And I, that's now saved in. Uh, and obviously we can just see that it's still an engineer. Um, an engineer code won't be able to set unset the alarm. Um, you can just obviously enter engineer mode and this is obviously how we can we can change the master code as well uh, when you first go into your setup users it will go to your first available user so if I just type in um, just a random code you can see it's now gone to user 3 and um, because obviously I've just used up number 2 um, use the up and down buttons to go between 
And if I want to delete a user, on an elite you just press the reset button, but on a normal premier you have to press yes, and then you press reset, and then I do want to delete user 2, and now obviously it takes me back to user 2 because it's now empty. Um, the things that we use most often is the engineer utilities. Um, we can view the event log by pressing yes, which is your null option. And then one is going to be your bell test, two your walk test, three is your zone status, which I used earlier. Um, eight will be your time, and nine will be your date. Those are the ones that I use most often. Um, you'd use the, the walk test on a maintenance, the bell test on a maintenance, and you should also use your view status as, as on the maintenance as well. Um, and obviously checking the time and date to make sure those are correct. Um, inside the panel is a, is a little bit different. So this is the inside of the board. So basically all we've got here is the zones going kind of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, again, those these are the long colours. Obviously, uh, forgive, the, forgive the panel. Uh, it's not very well set up. Obviously these two terminals here will be your um, your speaker, basically. And on the bottom it has got it name board uh, with a positive and a, an SPK. Um, and then we've got the network, which will be this these terminals here, and this will obviously be your positive and negative for your power, the transmit and receive, and your data. Um, and then from here, we've then got the bell, which I've basically linked out because it's not working properly. And to do that, all I've done is on the link between the zero volts and the tamper, um, and it's basically not got it's not really monitoring the tamper. Basically, all it's got is the the bell trigger. And it's also got its power going to the bell, um, and that's it really. I mean, the bell can work if I, if I want it to, but um, it's fine. I live in a nice neighbourhood. If I was to have a um, a dual com added to this, what I would use is my panel outputs up the top here, and that's obviously just enable one to eight. And you can get a, a Digimode in, which is a it's called a a, um, a com module or two four hundred module, and that will plug into this. Um, use make sure you have the panel down powered when you when you plug that in. Another thing to bear in mind is these are poly fuses. So basically, what will happen is if I've shorted out or if I've um, gone up to the network or the auxiliary and uh, touched the red and black together, what will happen is the poly fuse will will blow, it will flash a light, but then will come back on the line again as soon as I've um, I've taken that off. Okay, this red light is perfectly normal, which just means that there's is there is transmitting data. Um, and and that's basically it. On the buttons on the board, all we've got is at the top we've got a load defaults button. Um, to which if if you've lost the engineer code, all you need to do is just press and hold that down for five seconds when the board is still powered up, um, and that will default the engineer code. Um, if you've got any faults on these panels, the best thing to do is to down power it and then kickstart it off the battery. To kickstart it off the battery, obviously take the mains and the battery off plug the battery back on but it won't power back up again so what you need to do is just short out the, the kickstart terminal this is just here see if that focuses in yeah there we go and that's obviously just focused in for you guys just so you can see that a little bit better um, and that's that's essentially I mean it's quite a straightforward panel if you do get problems with these as I said do a kickstart off the battery with the mains undone and see if that resolves any problems um, if it doesn't, then then it is going to be a, a persistent problem that you probably haven't fixed yet. Um, a lot of the time, if you have a power cut, what will happen is obviously the battery will take over the load from from the mains, and um, when when the mains comes back online, it will still say you've got mains power off, even though your light on your top of your keypad uh, will will still be on constantly, which it should be. If it's flashing, it means that it's um, on the battery. Basically, so obviously just bear that in mind. Um, the terminals are obviously quite straightforward to use. It's just one to eight. These are, as I said, end of line um, or single pole. And we've got this zone which is linked out, which is my auxiliary tamper. Um, in the previous video, I did it as a double pole. Um, and that, oh no, sorry, it's a single pole. And this auxiliary tamper would be um, daisy chain to all my detectors, but I haven't done that as I basically got a grade one system. Um, don't worry, it's not it's not in the insurance or anything, so it's absolutely fine. Um, it's actually quite a straightforward, uh, quite a straightforward system, to be honest. Um, yeah, so this is the video for the Premier um, 
24. I mean, there is, as I said, elites and different size versions. Um, but if there is any anything specific you do want to know regarding these panels, let me know, and I'll do a, a short video re of regarding those. Um, but that's just a quick little rundown of, of the most common things you'll need to know uh, with these panels.